Yo, what's up, my guy? My brother, how are you? How's everything? Man, I'm doing good, man. You know, you can't see him too well, but, you know, I am, you know, we are, we are repping today. Man, you got some nice pieces back there. We, we are repping the killer cams. I see. You know what I'm saying? We, we, got the, we got the baby blue. Man, you might have some stuff that I don't have back there, man. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So, so shout out to my guys, uh, uh, Marte in, in Dallas and uh, Dan in Houston. So, they're my people. Yeah, it was, how's everything, man? Man, everything is wonderful, man. You know, uh, it's, you know, it's definitely different with the pandemic, but, you know, we go work through it. <laughs> man, I've been home since March 10th working from home since March 10th. That was our last day in the office. Yeah. And the world has changed so much, you know. And you in Boston? Where you at? Boston, yes, sir. Yeah, you originally from Boston? No, I originally from Philly, but I moved here from Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta since 95. Okay. So, yes. you know, I, I, I put my roots down in Atlanta, you know. I yeah. had to learn my hustle in Atlanta. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm based in Dallas, but spent a lot of time in Houston, a lot of time in L.A., but uh, I am one of the few uh, Philadelphia Eagle fans in uh, in Dallas, so you know, so I ride heavy for uh, for the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, man. I was in, I was in Minnesota when they won the Super Bowl. I was up there for Super Bowl. So yeah, that was, that was a good experience. Yeah, and then uh, and then I love the city of Boston. Uh, yeah. One of my best friends is uh, Marcellus Bennett and Michael Bennett, and so you know, so definitely then been through Boston a few times, and then. Uh, my favorite uh, NBA player was Antoine Walker, and me and him working on a project together. So he was on nice. my show. Nice. How's everything? That's, that's everything. Yeah. Th thanks for having me. First of all, yeah, you know, sure, I man. See, um, I see my, my 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 sister Shayla was on here. Um, yeah, I had a um, a little radio show back in Atlanta, and Shayla did my show one time. So that's okay, cool right there. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know you. I didn't realize your background was radio, man. The, it's not. It's not. <laughs> So I don't even want to. I'm not. A, I'm not a media person at all. But you know, when you when you when you partake in the culture, we try to man. We, we try but, tentacles as far as we can take them. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I yeah. used to uh, work for Tom Joyner, so um, so I do have a radio background. But I was always on the on marketing side, behind the scenes. But um, you know, I developed this show due to the pandemic because it's like I got contacts. People are in the house. They came over around. Then yeah, why not? You know. Uh, put some content out there so people can kind of talk about what's going on in their stories. And so, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So uh, once again, I appreciate you for being on the You Know Desi show. Uh, for the uh, viewing audience, may I may not know. Uh, please tell them who you are and uh, what you do. Uh, man, my name is Dean Jackson. I am a global entertainment partnerships manager at Reebok. Um, I.e., I call myself an executive intern. Yeah. You know, where, you know, they ask me to take out the trash, I'll do that also. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, I always try to tell people you can't be too good to do a job. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. some people get to a certain point and think like they can't do certain things anymore. So mm -hmm. I was brought up in this game from the intern realm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being an intern for Ludacris and DTP and work my way up through that angle. So I always try to keep that with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you're an intern, you're trying to do anything to be recognized, you're trying to do anything to earn your stripe so uh -huh. no matter what i still keep that part with me oh okay that, that's really dope uh, a good friend of mine dalen golf uh used to uh he's with wingstop now wingstop corporate but uh, but he used to work with conjure cognac so uh so i know shaka through through him and, yeah. and so uh, yeah. that's really really dope um yeah so so how did you get i guess you know because you mentioned that you were on the music side so how did you move through that and get to the, you know, to the sneaker side? It's, um, <laughs> that's a great question. But to me, it's all connected, right? Yeah. So sneakers has always been there. Fashion has always been there when you, when you're working in the music business, whether you build the relationships with stylists, whether you get in <laughs> brands or send them product for an artist of ludicrous magnitude, just for yeah. them to wear it or whatever. Right. <laughs> so I remember, Back in the day, working for Luda, he did a deal with Puma. Uh, yeah. That was, whenever that was, I can't, I want to say 06 or something like that. I can't even remember the year. But he did a deal with Puma, um, and they did this huge sneaker launch event 
at mm. All Star in Houston years ago. Yeah, um, yeah. And it was him and uh, Walt Clive Frazier, and like mm -hmm. so, you know, it's always there. You know, we've seen it since the beginning of time, since Run DMC and Adidas and right. Jay, Jay Z and Reebok, whoever sneakers is Nelly and Air Force One sneakers is always a part of the culture. Yeah. You know, so I don't even look at it as sneakers or music. I just look at it as like selling the product to yeah. whoever. Right, I think it's the same, sim not same, but similar methods that we use to get these records out to people and get people to buy concert tickets. It's the same yeah. strategies and you know whatever to mm -hmm. get sneakers to the consumer. <clears throat> so. Yeah, yeah, and and, um, and I and I take it as you being kind of like myself. I'm naturally a connector, so whether it's whether it's media, whether it's music, magazines whatever portion of it is, it's still about relationships at the end of the day and doing the business. So if you're trying to get, you know, like you mentioned, if you're trying to get music out, then you're going to send the music early to the influencers and make sure they're on it and make sure they're on board. Uh, and then it came with, uh, with sneakers. And so, you know, that's how I've kind of navigated uh, through as well. Yeah. So, um, so that's the first thing I always try to tell people is that, you know, I, I, I had a stint at Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. uh, used to work at Rostrum Records, and I've always just took the same hustle with me wherever I went. You know, whatever the mission was, okay, this is what we're doing. Okay, yeah. let me just go go do what I do. You know, whether it's making phone calls, making emails, shaking hands, kissing babies, yeah, sure. whatever, you know, I long, long as it gets done. Yeah. You know, um, I've been fortunate enough to make a career off running my mouth. That's what I call it. And, you know, you know, so we're going to sit around the house and talk about sneakers. We're going to talk about music. If we were unemployed, right? right? We going, we going to talk about this. We going to talk about every new thing we see and come out. Oh, yo, you seen those new kicks. Yeah. Oh, you heard that new record. Oh, you see that new girl on Instagram, whatever it is. Yeah. We're going to talk about it anyway. So why not get paid for it? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I know you mentioned what, 05, 06, I guess when you were working with Luda, uh, that's when Atlanta was really popping and, and really building, you know, really building up, you know, uh, I was around Atlanta that time as well. Uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Grip Magazine. Yes, but, I do. Yeah, I used to work for Grip, but I was like the Texas rep and then kind of had the Southwest. So I would come in, go to Visions, you know what I'm saying? See so what's even, even so even that kind of stuff, like even from a media standpoint, which was back then, it was huge for the culture. When you're talking about Grit Magazine and Juice Magazine and Ozone, uh, Ozone Magazine with Julie, you know what I'm saying? So it's like all those kind of things. Like we used to say, uh, no, nobody had more hustle than Julie. You know what I'm saying? She used to be everywhere. Be like, yo, how many did you like clone yourself? She would be yeah. in Miami, New York, Atlanta, Texas. Yep. LA. I'm talking about and be at all the spots and all the video shoots and like right. like yo, like so now with doing everything digitally from a phone and Instagram and posting and this and that, like I like I think I always try to tell, especially when I run into younger people, mm -hmm. that's well, how can I get into it? How can I'm like, yo, I don't want to sound like the old guy, but y'all got it easy. Like, yeah. like build your digital game up, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, it's always a relationship thing, but build yeah. that digital game up and, you know, be strategic in how you present yourself through mm -hmm. social media and all of that. Because today, that's the digital resume, right? So it's like people will look at your Instagram before they look at your resume. <laughs> you know, so let me see what this guy or girl is about. Let me see if they talking crazy on social media or let me see if they're taking a stance on social justice issues. Let mm -hmm. me see if they're you know, clean cut. Let me see if they're a tastemaker in music or a social scene or whatever. So yeah. it's, it's your digital resume. It's everything. So, you know, I think that the way we present ourselves through this, through all these social channels is everything at this point. Yeah, and, and you know, and you have to tell a story as well. And, uh, and whenever I talk to young people, I say, like, when it comes to social media, like, especially Instagram specifically, I'm like, you put the bullshit in your stories and you put your real shit on the, on the feed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, 
you know, sometimes you want to, you're somewhere and you're like, man, this is dope and I want to put it out there, but everything don't necessarily fit on your feed. Not if you're... So, I come, I come from the era of, I remember, I'm a late bloomer to all this shit. Like, I'm the kind of person, like, if you tell me, I got to really be passionate about it to get on it first. Yeah. Whatever it is, music, whatever. So, I remember when, when... MySpace first popped off, and I remember when Twitter first popped off, right? I, mean, I remember the day I created a Twitter account, right? Yeah. And then I remember when Instagram first popped off. I didn't get on Instagram until two, three years after <laughs> it came out. I was like, no, I, was... I don't need to do that. I, I was like, I don't need to do that. everybody taking pictures of their food because that's, that's what everybody was doing, going out to eat, taking pictures of their food. And then once I finally got on there, playing around with it, and I went through like, I would say like three iterations of <laughs> how I presented myself on on Instagram and social media. And uh -huh. now I got to the point where, okay, going back to saying, like, I can use this as a digital resume. What do I want people to see about me? What do I want to show people? What do I want to give out? So, I, you know, we all have our fun and post bullshit sometimes, but I try to stay away from that. I comment on it and talk shit with people. But really, like, um, one of the OGs, Jeff Dixon from DTP, he used to always say, "Hey, yo, B, everybody's watching." Right. And he he would say that before. I'm talking about three or four, five or six. Yeah. So it's like I was looking at like, oh, what if Oprah looking at my page and I don't know it? <laughs> like what? Like what do I want her to see? You know, what if Warren Buffett just came across my page? Like you know what I'm saying? Like so. Sometimes you only have that one time to make an impression. Absolutely. Sometimes you get more times, but some certain people in certain ways, and you just figure out how you want to position yourself. Yeah. You know, professionally and socially and everything. So I try to be careful on what I post. Right. Yeah. So you know. And it, and it's really important because at the end of the day, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, you're a hustler between it all. So no matter what, you're still building your personal brand. And yeah. because, you know, at times you're working with this company at another time you're working with this company. But if you're consistent the entire time, then people will understand, no, it's this person, you know, and, yeah. um, and, and I come from, you know, like probably 90, 95% of my business comes off referrals. So therefore, you know, I have to make sure that I present myself a, a certain way and you know, you just never know what will come of it, and just try to do good business as well. I seen, I seen Coltrane was online with somebody doing on like doing an Instagram live with somebody. Coltrane from Team Epiphany, yeah, and he had real stuff. He was like, the true influencers in the game don't have the followers, yeah. right? The true influencers, right? right. So I know you in Dallas. So if I'm like, if I'm trying to move around Dallas, I'm gonna call you. I'm like, yo, yeah. where I need to move, how I need to move, what we right. Doing. Yeah, right, and you might not have. I know you got like seventeen thousand followers, but yeah. this people out here with hundreds of thousands of followers or uh -huh. millions of followers and all that. Yes. And a lot of times, those aren't the individuals I call them. The people with six-digit followers or nine-digit right. followers. You know what I'm saying? Like those aren't the people I talk to to try to get things done. I'm calling the people that I know who's behind the scenes, who have yeah. the relationships, yeah. who are who have. Uh, operated in different spaces in the business right so because at the end of the day we've been around longer than a lot of artists that we've at, seen man, go. man i'm so glad you mentioned that because i go and speak at a lot of schools and that's the one thing that i always say like uh it's about exposure one and so we're so used to oh i want to be an nba or nfl player i want to be a movie star you know we just see you know, being in front of the camera, but people don't realize that behind the scenes, as you said, we can last years and years and years and be in the same spaces, you know, like, uh, uh, kind of, I was listening to that, uh, the Jay-Z line earlier when he was, uh, today on New York City, when he's yeah. talking about, I'm sitting next to Spike if you pan left or right. Yeah. You know? and, and, and I'm like that. I'm like, I'm, I'm not always in front of the camera, but if you look over, just a little bit it's always someone yeah. like that yeah and so it's like I, I i always look at the people like the la reeds or the steve stouts and like they've been here for so long mm -hmm. doing what they do and it's like when you think of somebody like a la reed how long he's been around just in his position right, right. and being like a leader in music and entertainment right and how many artists have come and gone 
Uh -huh. And not just at the hands of him, but just in the industry as a whole. Period. Yeah. Since I can remember, right? Since yeah. the LaFace days, like a lot, we've seen a lot of artists come The deal. Out. <laughs> He's yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, just a lot of artists, like, and just, I'm just want to keep it to hip hop and R&B, but like, we, every summer was a new artist. Every mm -hmm. summer we see a new artist with a new hit record. And, right. So now at this point, when I see, I'm like, okay, let me, how long are you going to stay here? <laughs> right. I don't even get into, oh, you got the hot record, right? Huh? How long are you going to stay here? Right. Okay. Damn. Okay. One year went by. Two years went by. Three years went by. This person still here. They still putting out hot records. Yeah. Right. They they they're increasing their brand presence. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like those kind of things because we can jump on the the, the next hot artist. You're right. Every summer. Yeah, and and it's also looking how artists you know um, transform on a business standpoint as well. And you look at kind of the moves that they make. Because it's like if you just an artist and you just trying to stay an artist forever, it's a it's a, a lot harder than okay maybe I'm in clothing now maybe I'm bringing up some new artists you know yeah. and, and that's what I love about Atlanta is even even though some artists kind of come and go it's a core group in Atlanta that kind of helps usher in new artists and that always kind of keeps them relevant you know what I'm saying yeah so even like you asked a question earlier like I it just hit me. And you was like the transition from like music or whether it was Coke or whether it was sneakers, right? And like, I'll say this again. I don't look at it like, oh man, I gotta go sneakers. I never worked in sneakers before. I look at it as like, everything to me is culture, right? Yeah. So it's like, and I try to position myself as like, uh, almost like a cultural lie detector. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, so when I go into the meetings and all this kind of stuff and ideas are being thrown at the board and, oh, Dean, what do you think about this? Oh, Dean, what do you think about nope. that? I think it's my responsibility, keyword yeah. responsibility, be like, oh, no, that's whack. Yeah. Or, oh, no, we can't position black people in that way. Yes. Right. Or we yeah. can't, or the photograph is hot or the video is hot, but the, the caption ain't right. Or, yeah what that person is saying is not on point, right? Yes. So this should be, I think, at any company at this point, not just of what we've seen in the past year, this year, but at any point, there should be somebody <laughs> at every company, corporate yeah. company especially, every company, who's a cultural person. Like, yeah. you don't have to know everything about corporate America, right? Mm -hmm. What you do know is when you step into that room and they put something on the board, that yeah. ain't right. That may yeah. resonate well. You be like, yeah, that ain't gonna fly. Yeah, it's it's almost like the the H and M situation or the Gucci situation. It's like it's like there's no way that more than you know, and you have to have somebody in the room that's empowered that ain't scared to to go against the you know. So, that, the, that, so that's another part of it. The word scare is like some people are satisfied with getting their paycheck every two weeks, like I say, and they, they won't speak up. I can't do that, right? Because in, in the where I come from, as far as just from the entertainment community, right? Yeah. If anything I'm attached to or part of come out the door that's wet, my phone going to blow up. <laughs> I'm glad. Right? And, I, and, I, and I'll be quick to tell people, like, at the end of the day, as a member of the team, I can't. <laughs> Throw, I can't throw my team under the bus. I'm like, oh, yeah, I wasn't a part of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It's like, because from the outside looking in, like, no, you work for that company, whatever company yeah. that is. You right? so, <laughs> so it's like, if you connected to the entertainment world, and your entertainment people won't call you and be like, yo, <laughs> what you doing over there? You came by, oh, that wasn't me. That was my coworker. No, nah, that was me. And we, I'm going to take these thoughts and ideas and comments and back to the table I'm like hey yeah. people, people don't like the way we did that that right. time right we need to look at going in a different direction for the next thing you know yeah. what I'm saying? once that thing is out the door that's already done so you already have to start planning for the next thing and be like how can we just move better right on the next on the next thing yeah so, and and you know how it is in, in certain spaces and, and i'm glad you 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 brought that up. It's kind of the same way. It's like if if uh, if you at Reebok, anything um, anything that comes out Reebok uh, is going to go to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't know nobody else over there. I'm calling you. <laughs> yeah. So, but the but the thing is, I think that um, 
we we can't allow and we're outside we're outside the brain and we're yeah. a creator a dj a fashion designer a media personality the first thing what happens is these brands we need to attach ourselves to anything that's cool to help our metrics move further right yeah so the first thing i tell people is when i'm calling somebody i tell people Yo, i don't want to change what you're doing like yeah. with apparently if i'm calling you i think what you're doing is hot so yeah. i just want to be a part of it right? right so how can i contribute to it whether it's put some dollars behind it whether it's supported through product storytelling to yeah. you know to elevate what you're doing because in turn once we attach ourselves to the cool influencers or the cool celebrities mm -hmm. we're going to be right a part of the moment right this is all about being part of moments like yeah. anything when it was jay-z and reebok that was a moment yeah right? when it was iverson and jadakus that was a moment yeah. right that, that's not going to the the creative won't last forever but the emotion that the creative creates right. will last forever yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like you know going back to see a lot of people use Jay-Z and Reebok as like the gold standard on how a rap or entertainer should partner with a footwear brand. Yeah. Right. During that time, it's, it's really like, and I'm not just saying that because I'm at Reebok, but yeah. everything that it did, it sold out fast all over the world. It right. was authentic. It was the biggest rapper in the world at that time. You know what I'm saying? So now 20 years later, when we're thinking about partnerships, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to recreate, Jay-Z and Reebok, right? Yeah. But we move forward and now we have Cardi B and Reebok. Right. Yeah. So for what she is today, yeah. right? She's hands down one of the biggest female rap rap artists ever. Right. Right. She's a, a big personality, right? Super creative, super talented. And so in 2020, how can we create that energy? That authentic energy between the brand and hip hop and storytelling, et cetera. Yeah. So, you know. And 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 I look at the 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 same way as, you know, you mentioned moments and and the and the whole thing about like the nineties are coming back, the um, you know, the Iversons coming back. Like, man, literally, whenever I wear any of these shoes, bruh, somebody stops me. It don't matter what pair I got on. Like, like uh I was at uh, at Super Bowl in Miami. Like MC Hammer stopped me. Like, hey, bro, <laughs> where can I get those? So if, if I'm not mistaken, now, I don't just want to blurt something out. I'm almost positive. Outside of Jordan, the Iverson, especially the questions, may be the most popular basketball signature basketball shoe yeah. behind Jordan, right? Yeah. Like in the world, and yeah. maybe even that for ourselves also, yeah. right? So um, once again. Is just authentic, like just how Jordan hasn't played in twenty something years, neither has mm -hmm. Iverson. But yeah. the emotion and that feeling of the shoes when they go out to the world, how people view them, how yeah. people rock them, how people still clamor for them, like yo, anytime like we post something on social media, say like this Iverson yeah. is coming, people start hitting me like yo, can I get that? Can I get that? <laughs> like, and it's like it's a good feeling to, like to know that you're a part of something that's that's still relevant. That people, right. that people still care about. Once again, whether it's fashion, whether it's music, sneakers, whatever, to be a part of something that people are like, yo, I need that. Yeah. Right? That means you're doing something right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're doing yeah. you're doing something right as a as a team and as a brand. Yeah, and, and, and that's how you even came up on my radar is because, you know, I've been, I guess, on their influencer list for quite some time. And so, you know, every so often, you know, they'll hit me like, yo, we got this new pair coming out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to send them to you. We want you to, you know, take some pictures, hashtag Reebok Dallas, Reebok Houston, or, you know, yeah. partner with them and do an e event or something like that. And, and, you know, I always just try to, you know, rep with them. And, um, and even with some of the partnerships through Foot Locker, because Foot Locker yeah. reached out to me uh, before, around the same time that one of the reps reached out, uh, also, Foot Locker reached out with, yo, we doing something with Reebok. You know what I'm saying? So we, yeah. uh, me and an a, a artist that I manage out of Houston, Keith Jacobs, we ended up getting some of the Iversons through Reebok and then some of the other classic shoes through Foot Locker just because of partnerships. Yeah, so like in that, me working on partnerships, that's a, that's a great, that means we're once again doing something right because 
all our partners, Foot Locker has been a great partner to Reebok for, for many, many years. I was just looking at an old school, um, old Clyde Drexler commercial from back <laughs> in the day, Reebok, and it was powered by Foot Locker and Reebok. So um, for a very long time, Foot Locker has been a, a strategic partner with yeah. Reebok, and they we, we work well together when it's time to um, – tell the story, get the product out to the influencers, like, because we can't do it all our own. Like, we don't know everybody. So we need, right. uh, it's a group effort. You know, it takes a village to, to get these products out the door and get these stories told and get it in the hands of the right people in key markets, right? Yeah. So that's another thing. Yeah, and, and talk about some more um, of what you do with some of those partnerships and things that you kind of look for and that you've worked on specifically so people kind of understand that as well. What I always look for is is authentic. Yeah, it has to be real. And you like you have to naturally be cool. You can't be cool just because you got a, a partnership deal. Right. right. So, um, one of something that that we recently released that I had the opportunity to work on was we just signed Christian Combs, Diddy's son. Yeah. Uh, to an influencer partnership, and he's just a natural fit. He's a cool kid. He's young. Yeah. Uh, he's music fashionable. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes from a rich legacy of cool and <laughs> hip hop <laughs> and culture, right? So, yeah. and then, but the other thing is, he's making his own waves, doing it his own way. He is yeah. it's more than just being Diddy's son. He's actually building his own personal brand as King Combs, Christian Combs, the model. Of course, he's done like high fashion model for like um, many various brands. I can't remember all the brands. Um, yeah. The Reebok partnership is his first footwear partnerships so you know happy about that a lot of times people have done business with all types of footwear brands at this point if you have yeah. any kind of celebrity or influence and the fact that you know we were able to be the first footwear brand that he partnered with which is super yeah. cool in my opinion and hopefully we can continue that relationship and do um mm -hmm. a lot of cool things coming down the line with him that's just an example um but it's bigger than me Right, it's it's a, a large team that works with a wide range of talent. Right, so yeah. um, I can't even now uh, name some of the talent that we have coming because it's not released yet. But yeah. um, just so many people we've worked with: Khalid, um, of course, I mentioned Cardi B, yeah. um, DJ Oso out of Atlanta. So it could be the local DJ, it mm -hmm. could be that R and B star, it could be that rap icon it can be the cool influencers in their community that people follow Absolutely. Um, it's it's all about does that person fit the product and the story that we're putting out at that time yeah for yeah sure. yeah for sure um yeah and if y'all ever get a neon sign or something like that i, I need to i need to rebuy neon sign to put it behind me on the show <laughs> i think that'll be yeah. cool. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so the thing is, and you, and the, uh, another thing is, is truly understanding where you stand as a brand, right? So we know that uh, Nike is there, right? And we yeah. know that everything that brings, we know that Adidas is there and Adidas, uh, we're, we're part of the Adidas family, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we're still an individual brand ourselves as Reebok and we're here to carve out our space, right? Yeah. And I think, I truly believe in my personal opinion, that our space has always been um, the athletes that we sign have a certain kind of swagger and attitude. Yeah. Like when you think about Emmett Smith, when you think about D Brown and covering his <laughs> eyes in the dunk contest, right? When you think about Shaquille O'Neal and being a polarizing figure and not just sports and media, yeah. anything that he touches, right? I think even the, the entertainers, whether I said Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Cardi B, those are like just certain level polarizing yeah. figures that I'm naming. That's yeah. like, I'm that's, like, that's like we're not just signing anybody. Like yeah. Everybody I'm naming is like, like icon status at yeah. this point, right? Even yeah. the, even the, the newer assets that we, that we look to partner ourselves with is like, who, we're looking at like, who's like different, who's going to be the next thing, yeah. right? Trying to get, a, trying to get a hold of it early, right? And build those relationships that we can look up two, three years down the line and we're still creating with them, whether we're creating product or campaigns or whether just they're showing up at our events, like when we do Complex Con and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all those cool things, right? Yeah. So 
I think there's so many different ways we can look at partnerships. And I think it is so many different ways that we do look at partnerships just because of the, that we have internally. And, um, everybody has their own perspective on how to partner with someone. But yeah. at the same day, we all are fought, like trying to achieve the same goal. Right. So it was whether it's myself or one of my coworkers and they all say, Hey, I'm thinking about signing X, Y, Z person and I'm going to use them like this. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Right. Yeah. But you know, I can't work on everything just like they can't work on everything, but we still have to reach one common goal right. at the end of the day in our partnerships. And that is basically to sell product. <laughs> like, so, so to make it, to present it as a cool product, um, as a, a at a great price point, and so people can go out and be like, yo, I know I seen Christian Combs in that shoe. I seen Iverson rocking that, or I seen Cardi B rocking that, or whatever, or whoever. And then hopefully that trans translates into product sales for any. Yeah, reason. and I'm and I'm glad you mentioned Complex Con is uh, the the activation at the last Complex Con was really dope. Uh, the the Pharrell one and you know and everything that was going on. Uh, I was out there because. I used to be on a show called Mostly Football with Complex and Yahoo Sports. Uh, yeah. And so still having those relationships and and being that, you know, Reebok has always looked out for me. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to take my Reeboks and go take some pictures over there, you know, buy everything. So, uh, so And it's a lot. And the crazy thing is I started at Reebok last March. And my yeah. first time ever going to any Complex Con was in July in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how much went into it, honestly. Yeah. Like the prep that goes into it, the mo the all hands on deck that goes mm -hmm. into it, like the different departments. Like so, people will show up and they see the, the 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 amazing looking booth and all the talent and celebrity that we have yeah. there. But before we even get to that point, we have like a U.S. team mm -hmm. internally that's like working on it for like nine months ahead of time. Like yeah. I'm talking about like going through different renditions on how the booth will even look like, Oh, that's not right. Changing. We're talking about a, a $900,000 plus yes. activation just for right. three days. Yes. So it's like, Oh, and they're flying from Boston to LA just to meet with the agency who's building the booth and like yes. making changes on the spot. Like, so it's so much that goes into it. So by the time the, the doors open up and everybody walk in and all the celebrities and influencers are walking around and yeah. It actually makes my job easy when all I have to do is like pull an influencer over to the booth and like, hey, you want some free shoes? <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like, it's easy. And they're like, where you at? I'm at the Reebok booth. Oh, the biggest booth in the whole room. <laughs> oh, the booth, <laughs> the, the spaceship right there. And Pharrell Williams is there and Iverson is there. It makes it kind of easy, right? But that's, those are the, 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 the unsung heroes that a lot of people don't see. Like, yeah. So, you know. And a, and a lot of my background is that agency experience too, working on activations for like, you know, whether it's at Essence Festival with State Farm or, you know, or uh, doing 28 days with AT out in LA. So yeah. coming from that event activation standpoint, it's like when the event is actually going on and the celebrities are there, that's like the relief part more so than anything because you've been in the office working on this, then you got to build it out, you know, and, and and hoping something fits the way it did when you were kind of looking at it, you know what I'm saying? It's always but I, I still had, let me say the crazy part. Yeah, I still had, a, <laughs> even working for a big global brand and all that kind of stuff, I still go into any event like feeling like nobody's going to show up right <laughs> like like what if like we open these doors and we got these thousands pairs of shoes back here in this in this box and like nobody shows up and everybody just walk past our booth right and like oh yeah forget y'all like so just to use so you was there so you some context like so you have the bbc booth that was right next to us mm -hmm. right but then on the other side of us we had jerry lorenzo right <laughs> and then we had like the puma booth yeah. Right? So it's like, oh, you trying to put us in the fire. So <laughs> I feel I be feeling like, yo, you want you must want us to flex our muscle. So yeah. as, a, as a team, we we like join forces like Voltron, like myself, my guy Calvin Green, my guy John Carl, uh, who all work on this entertainment team, and we like literally huddle up and like, look, we got to divide and conquer. Yes, like, anybody we see on this floor, we got to drag them over to the Reebok booth. Right, sure we get the photos, make sure we get make sure we get product in their hand. But and once again, like I said, that goes back to the, the internship mindset, the intern mindset. You right? do what you as, a, as an intern, 
you like your job is to wrangle, run around, yes. make it happen, right? And a lot of times people get into executive roles and be like, oh, I got the title now. I'm gonna just I can just fall yeah, back like, in the corner. I don't gotta yeah. do nothing. And I can yeah. never I can never be like that. I'd rather be seeing myself sweating with a t-shirt on, running around like, yo, you gotta come over to the Reebok booth, get some kicks, right? I know the first thing is if I say free sneakers. I can get you over there. And then once I get you over there, anything else we, else we need to talk about, all right, man, I got you over in my room. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm pulling, I'm being disrespectful. I'm going to other booths. Like, Yo, come to the Reebok booth. Over here. <laughs> right? So people are like, hold up. They, I got them at my booth. Like, Yo, I got how many pairs of sneakers you need? 10? I got them. <laughs> people are like, I get 10 pairs of free sneakers? Yeah, come on with me. Right? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll work from there. So, but once again, going back to relationships, just seeing like, um, Jen G, uh, she she was like bringing Usher into into uh, Complex mm -hmm. Con, and I'm like, yo, Usher, I need you to come over to the booth, or for real, yeah. can, can you come over to the booth, or Jada Kiss, whoever it is, uh, whether it's large name, small name, doesn't matter, influencer, <laughs> you just know, and that's the thing about knowing and those relationships that's like <laughs> that money really can't pay for, right? So yeah, I work on the entertainment side a lot with more like music celebrity. For example, when my guy John Carl, and he's he's in the chat right now, but like he works on like a lot of these high level influencers that I don't even know who these people are. He's like, yo, you've seen such and such, and I'm seeing looking, they got three hundred thousand followers. I'm like, yo, let me follow them. Yeah. I don't even know who they are, right? So it's yeah, so it's a lot that goes into it. That's all I'm trying to say, and I want people to understand that the lesson is in the work, right? So you have to put the work in. You have to, yeah. Pick up every um, call, every email. Like it's all important. It's all important. And yeah, and you know, and the funny thing, you know, is like we're working with a corporate, you know, working with corporate companies, but they don't understand that cool always. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we have to tell them who's cool, or we have to. We'll see them at the event and have to tell them who somebody is. No, you know. and, that, and that a lot of times it could be frustrating at times, but then I look at it on the flip side and like, I thank God that some people don't know. And because without that, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like to be honest, like, so it, it takes every, so it takes, it's a reason why a president of a company is a president of a company or a vice president is a vice president. And it's a reason why there's people that focus on, some people just focus on digital. Right. Right. And like, yo, the, the digital game is strong from a corporate side and they can do things that I can't do, right? But I still, yeah. we still need to work together to, to bring these products to life, bring these stories to life. Um, it's a PR, it doesn't matter. Um, brand comms, the yeah. product designers, even when they're going through different iterations of creating the product and you're looking at it as it's being made and through the stages, like from my idea stage and say like, oh, I think we're going to partner with such and such. And then it yeah. goes from that to, oh, here's a, a mock-up of what we could create. And yeah. here's version two, and here's version three. And then we get the sample in the office, and then we start going crazy. Like, yo, when this come out, oh, this yeah. doesn't come out until until Next. six months from now. We're like, oh, I got to get my hands on this. So we already in the office plotting, like, oh. Yeah. And so before it hits complex, before it hits hype beats and all that, we literally have a a silhouette of a sample in the office like months that we got to walk past every day and we like yeah. being like a big kid like when i get that i'm gonna rock it this way yeah can't uh, yeah so, yeah so to but me yeah, it's, but, it's exciting it's exciting still you know yeah and, and and that was another reason that i wanted to create this platform is to talk to the behind the scenes people like yourself that are really really making it happen uh within the industry that people may walk past in a mall and not even realize, like, no, you thinking you trying to get to Luda. No, like, the, the person to talk to is this guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy that it's really like that. Yeah, but, and I've always, you know, some, I think some people, when we're younger, middle school, high school, and we're trying to figure out what you want to do in life, and everybody's like, oh, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a producer, <laughs> right? So I knew early on that I couldn't rap. <laughs> I knew that about ninth grade, like really, you know what I'm saying? When I seen other ninth graders who could rap better, I'm like, I can't do it. And then I'm like, I don't have the attention span to try to learn how to make a beat and program an NPC, so I'm going to get away from that, right? Yeah. So my thing was like, 
I knew I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to be around artists and I knew I wanted to be around celebrities and all that. So my yeah. thing was, I would watch stuff like MTV Diary. Mm -hmm. You know, all that. And I wish they still made that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, on on MTV and BT or whatever. But, and it was like, I tell everybody this, it was like the diary of Ja Rule when he was on that Hard Not Life tour and he was walking with a lady, her name was Julie Greenswald, who's mm -hmm. now the CEO or of, Everything. of Atlantic, Warner Music, all that. But yeah. this time she was just director of marketing at Def Jam. Yeah. Right? Her, her name and title popped up and I told myself right there, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'll say if I can get if I can hang out with the artists, <laughs> I don't got to produce, I don't got to do this, and I can still yeah. go to all the cool parties and cool events. That's what I want to do. And then I locked in. That was around 11th grade, and I just locked in, like, marketing, 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 marketing. Everything at that from that point on has been a marketing focus, even when it was dealing with talent, working at record labels, consulting uh -huh. for brands. Yeah. For my own agency work, it was always marketing, marketing, marketing. And yeah. I'm still on that trajectory today. Yeah, see, mine started um, when I was in college. Uh, I always rapped, and so I used to rap and produce. But, um, you know, with, and this is pre-internet. This is when you had to pass out your CDs. You had to pass out your own flyers. And so where I got it was one of my boys was a, a label. He was, a, no, a college rep for maybe Atlantic. And then I knew the people from Sony BMG, in uh in dallas and so it was like you know what if i get associated with them and now i'm the college intern at the major label that's going to at least elevate my stock to where people may take a chance and listen to my music more so yeah. that was the thing that i did so and it was uh, it's, it's crazy i guess it was the same philosophy for everybody right it, like yeah. during uh, during that time college scene yeah, uh, label reps, all that. Either you was in it or you knew somebody who was doing it. But um, I did a, a talk a couple last week with Jason Jeter um, yeah. on his platform, and we were talking about that. And it was a time when Gangster Grills was everything. Great. Yeah. You, of course, you know, the drama did a whole lot of tapes with um, Texas based artists, you know, Absolutely. Paul Wall and all of them. Yeah. But it's like, you had to make something from nothing, right? So I used to intern for DJ Drama and Canon and Affiliates, right? So literally in their house, put in uh, the inserts and yeah. the CDs. Uh-huh. We're talking about 10, 20, 30,000 CDs. Right. Uh, Trap or Die, Nelly yep. Gangsta Grills, Paul Wall Gangsta Grills, all that Slim Thug, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so understanding that the product was a hot commodity mm -hmm. but being a young college kid you broke no yeah. money. so we got it so well okay you can get i think it was 200 cds came in a box yeah right so we had two three boxes of cds we'll take them to the flea markets uh -huh. and sell them to the flea markets at two dollars per cd yeah right so you know if i got 600 cds two dollars mm. per cd whatever <laughs> right and then have them in your hat, and then you, I break that money down with my homies. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because he knew somebody at that flea market. I knew somebody at this flea mm -hmm. market. And that yeah. would be our pocket money. Yeah. So, and now, so now we staying on top of DJ Drama, be like, yo, when the next CD coming out. Because we look at it <laughs> like, yo, that's some pocket money. Right? Yeah. But not only was it pocket money, it was a, 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 a VIP card almost. Yeah, so connection. It was like, oh, you can get into the club free because you got these gangster grills. Yes. Or you could uh, get food free from the local barbecue spot because, you know. Yeah. yeah. Get, I remember getting uh, drama, left, right, left. You know what I'm saying? I was like the first cat on campus. And this is when people were making mixtapes, too. So if you could make a mixtape, and I was like one of the first people that had like the CD burner at the crib. Everybody else, you know what I'm saying? So I'm burning think, CDs. And <laughs> another, another thing is, um, I think a lot of this era's music executive, so music executive, so when you think of um, since the 80s, when you think of LVRN, mm -hmm. when you think of anybody of that era, right? They Those young execs are literally walking a fine line of the sweet spot between 
they were there. They was there when it was still street teams and poster yeah. boards, right? Uh -huh. But they were also there at the beginning of this whole digital <laughs> social media wave, uh -huh. right? So they got all the insight on how to handle personal hand to hand relationships. Yeah, you know, building relationships that way. But then they were also on the brink of MySpace, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff, and digital marketing when. Right when record labels were saying, oh, we was hiring a new media person when they didn't even know how to frame it up as digital marketing, right? So yeah. because of that, it's so it's easier for them to break an artist. Right. So when, when you look at them, like, well, damn, how they, this person breaking and this person got three, mm -hmm. four, five million streams is because the people that they're assigned to or the people that's managing them Understand. have, have deep-rooted relationships, right, that goes back years yeah, right? and, the, and the, those relationships don't go back years. They still understand how to foster new relationships mm -hmm. and like cut through. They be like, okay, I have this kind of artist, R and B singer, or this kind of rapper, or yeah. this rapper's a street rapper, or this rapper's more of a conscious rapper, and they know how to cut it through wherever they need yeah. to get it through. Yeah, and another thing, and another thing that I used to do in college was uh, I would take a Source magazine or a Double XL, flip through the pages. I will find these random clothing lines and be like, I will call them or email them in New York and say, yo, we love your clothes in Texas. Nobody knows where to get them. You should let me promote them for you. So they will send me free clothes. So now I'm on campus with free clothes, passing out flyers. And then I go to the next company, like, look what I did for this company. You should let me. I'm going to tell you one, one thing that changed my life. And I always <laughs> tell um, Julia from um, Ozone this changed my life. She did a, um, an issue of an ozone. Yeah. And then one of those issues, it had every contact of every executive in the whole music business. <laughs> I don't know why she published it. I'm talking about whether it was Shaka Zulu, email address, cell phone yeah. number, office address, everything it was in the ozone. Yeah. And I remember having uh, uh, some kind of two way pager or something. <laughs> and I put every contact yeah. in that phone, right? The thing about me was I understood that okay I don't don't nobody know me all right so I I understood I need to email this person or call yes. this person or text this person as yes. if they already know me yes right that's how I used to present myself right so even when I was just an intern at DTP <laughs> I had the nerve to call somebody at <laughs> no limit and be like yo what's up this dean from from DTP what <laughs> two things two things I understood yeah. Uh, email address. Your email address was mm -hmm. like the it was like the icebreaker for connecting to another executive in the business, right? So right. If I don't know you, but your email say Bob at Rap a Lot Records, yeah. and then that person say yeah. Johnny at Swab House, and that I'm like, oh, we all in the same thing. Yeah. We all yeah. in the same field. Regardless, you feel like they well, they got an email. Yeah. We understand. And another thing I did was I tell anybody, you got to copy, copy, cheat, cheat test, copy off the best. People say, oh, Kobe Bryant played just like Michael Jordan. He walked yeah. like him. He talked like him. He faded away like him. Look at the results. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, look at the results. So I learned, like, I was sitting in the office and uh, we had a guy, my guy, Court Digger. He used to be like the radio person for DC. Yeah. So he would literally sit there on his cell phone, on his BlackBerry, and call almost every DJ in the country. Yeah. Or call them. And right. I got this new Luda record. I need you to play this. Yo, I got this new Shauna record. I need you to play that. Okay, let me take it from there. So yeah. when it was my turn, a, a younger artist that wasn't getting the attention that they needed at the label, because he was talking to the bigger artists, I'd be like, yo, you need me to help you out? And I'll start calling the radio station. Yo, I got this new <laughs> such, I got ludicrous new artists. Yes. Boom, boom, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Name dropping, doing all that. Yeah. What right. what he was when I worked for Grip Magazine, you know, this is around the time when Atlanta is popping, Jeezy, Luda, T.I. So so Grip done got me the Atlanta phone number. So now I'm in Dallas, but I got a 404 number. So everybody. At that time when Atlanta was on a boom, having <laughs> yes. a 404 number was like having a 212 number. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they like, you got the Atlanta number? Yes. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how it helped me progress with doing events, with getting access to artists, you know, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's, it's the, you, we have to be able to learn at every step, mm -hmm. right? 
and I and I have literally taken something from a little bit of everything and implemented it in who I've become today. Honestly, <laughs> like so, if it's I think in my personal opinion that DJ Drama and Gangsta Grills is the gold standard of mixtape. Yeah. Even though the mixtape game has changed so much these days, if an artist is putting out a quote unquote EP, yes. one thing I did know that the presentation that Drama and them gave to everybody mm -hmm. was better than everybody. Better yeah. than every I, DJ in the country. I, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you said, they treat it like albums, right? Yeah. Um things like um building relationships at radio, right? Mm -hmm. I use try to use those same habits to build relationships at streaming companies because yeah. you know that's the new radio, right? right. So it's like, okay, who's that person that have and no, I don't represent any artists or anything right now, but still yeah. it's all the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. It's all the same thing. I'm I'm thinking about ways right now. And I'm like, oh, I've had conversations with Spotify. Like, yo, how can I do a Reebok playlist? Yes, right. Yes. I yeah. want to do like thinking about ways to look at the next batch of talent. So if I'm over partnerships and it's my job to sign talent, I would yeah. like let me create a Reebok playlist uh -huh. at Spotify, right? Yeah, and I can get all these new artists that's before they become the big deal. Good let me look. get y'all on my playlist. Yeah, you start building the relationship. So when yeah. you do hit, right, and then I call you, you to like, let's do a Reebok deal. Yes, you remember. You charge me a million, you <laughs> might charge me seven fifty, and you can save me some money on my budget. Yeah, right? and it's and, and it, you know it's it's having those relationships and thinking forward. Just like right now, I'm I'm really big on relationships. So I'm like, if you're a new artist right now, the pandemic, everybody's even. I'm like, the forgotten people right now are the promoters and the DJs because they can't promote a club and they can't be DJing in a club. If I'm a new artist, like, it ain't even got to be no bunch, a lot of money, but I'm buying every DJ lunch. To, so when they go live and DJ, they playing my music. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because, yeah. right, like, DJs are struggling. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not a if you're not a radio station DJ or something like that, if you only do clubs, you might be struggling a little bit. So, so you got you got to treat it like the the come from the what do you need that's from the service standpoint, yeah. right? So at this point, it's all about servicing. Like when you call a DJ, like you said, DJ's not in the clubs no yeah. more. Clubs, it's club scene is different. You supposed to be calling. If nothing else, those DJs in your community. Yes. As a as a as a young artist, yo, what's what's going on? Fuck the music. Let's take the music out of it. Yeah, like, we in the pandemic. We in a social justice climate that's yeah beyond crazy right now. Right at this point, we supposed to just be calling each other and check on people. Yeah, for sure. So how you know, how you doing? How are you feeling? Right? Yeah, because some people can't even think about how to make their next dollar. Right. Or, even think creatively because they might have a family member that's affected by COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Or they could have a family member who was shot by police or yeah. who was arrested by police during one of the marches or something. So they're thinking about issues that's so much greater than getting a record played. Right. Right. But then those are also the insights that we as black people, we as uh, members of the culture, right, have yeah. to take back into the corporate offices. Yeah. So it's our once again the word responsibility going mm -hmm. to and when I say corporate, I just don't mean brand I mean these major labels, all that. Yeah. They'd be like, yo, I can't really funk think about that <laughs> proposal that I'm supposed to be typing up right now. Right. Because I'm watching black people die in the middle of the street on CNN. Yeah. Right. I'm watching uh police throw tear gas at hundreds of black people in Minnesota. Right, or I'm watching the uprisings in Atlanta or in Detroit, wherever it's taking place. Yeah. Right. So I can't think, hey, manager, boss, teammate. I can't even wrap my mind around how to get on this Zoom call for yeah. work <laughs> when it's right now. Yeah. Right. So that's another thing. Just being transparent, like as as black people, especially d d over these last six months. Dealing with everything that we've been seeing in the media and all that, right? We've mm -hmm. also had to show up at work, yeah, right? and put the smile on our face and like, oh yeah, let's let's talk about tomorrow's project and yeah. whatever, whatever, right? It's 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 we have to take that responsibility to, to tell our managers, 
teammates, mm -hmm. uh, the presidents, the vice presidents, like, hey, with all due respect, I know that this is important. We got to get this done. And yeah. this job pays our bills and our salaries. But there's some real shit going on out here. And I'm, yeah. affect and I'm affected by it, right? And I can't give you my 100% self at right. work. Because I'm watching people getting gun innocent people getting gunned down in the street, Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and so many others, right? Yeah. You know, Breonna Taylor, so many others. Yeah. And, and a lot of unsolved cases, right? So you, you, you can start to think about it that way. Like, what if that was my sister or my cousin or my mm -hmm. uncle or my brother? Yeah. And there are more four months go by, six months go by, and there's and their case is still unsolved, right? Yeah. Could you go to work? tomorrow and do your job at the highest level yeah because let's go let's go for you know and, and and all of the pandemic did is just it just magnified everything because our lives aren't as fast we're not going a bunch of places so we're just watching and consuming more you know it's been happening and it's just like we got to do something something has to change you know yeah um it's a lot bro it's 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 a lot. Um, I I can't. I got to jump off in a minute. I got to have to do another yeah, yeah. conference call. But I definitely want to. I definitely want to thank you for um for letting me be a part of this conversation. You know, anything that you need from me, feel free to reach out. Um, keep it going. Like once I seen certain people you had on there, like I'm a like, I'm a person that that operates from emotion, right? So you had like kid and play on there, right? Yeah. So my that that was the first tape my mom ever bought me with a walkman for my birthday i was like turned like five or six years old my mom bought me a walkman with the, with the kid and play tape yeah. you know what i'm saying and with no fast forward on it or something like that you had to flip the tape over yeah. and whatever, all that kind of stuff so when i said i was like okay you know what I'm so i see what you're doing uh it's much needed these conversations are needed whether we're talking about entertainment whether we're talking about social justice whether we're talking about Diversity and entertainment. I know you like you were talking to Shayla and another young lady who worked in the film industry yeah. uh -huh. and she was talking about diversity in the mm -hmm. industry. Um I seen something with randomly with Lena Waithe. She was doing something on the Instagram live and she was even telling something as simple as like hiring like more barbers and hairstylists in yes. Hollywood. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like uh -huh. we don't even think about that. Right. And you got about thirty seconds, it's gonna cut off because we yeah. have get about an hour. But yeah, yeah, so no, I I have to jump on a, a conference call. But hit me anytime. Let's pick this up in the next couple of weeks. Let's do a part two. I could I could talk all day. Um, yeah. it, it, it's so much to talk about. But like, keep up the great work. Keep repping the Reebok family. You know, sure. shoot me your information. I'll make sure to get you some product as well from okay. the, um, from the new stuff we have releasing in the next couple of weeks. And okay. um, yeah, just you. keep it up. Just keep it up, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. You have a great day, bro. You too. You do the same. Thank you.